What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'm going to show you why the United States of America might not be the best place to dropship to. As a beginner, it's completely understandable. Most of the people I talk to just assume that the US is the best place to sell to and they go onto YouTube, they start learning about dropshipping and naturally you're going to start learning from some of the bigger channels and most of those people are based in America. So everything they're talking about when it comes to the prices of products, the sales screenshots, whatever it might be, it's always in US dollars. Um, even some of the bigger kind of UK based guys as well, everything they talk and show is in dollars too. So it's understandable for people to think or just assume that you should be drop shipping in America. Whereas in this video, I'm gonna to prove to you why that may not always be the case. So in this video, I've got an overload drop shipping case study to show you, which has some really interesting information in. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I'm also gonna show you some important Important, some other important information which you need to consider, which will definitely help you in your dropshipping journey. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in and let's jump straight into it. Okay, so let's start the video off with this dropshipping case study from Oblo. If you're not quite sure who Oblo are, they basically create the link between Shopify and AliExpress. So all of the orders that essentially go through Oblo are dropshipping orders. So this is the case study. There's a lot to go through. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole thing. I'm just gonna highlight the key pieces of information. So one of our Oblo merchants who is also a US dropshipper agreed to share his Google Analytics stats with us for this case study on dropshipping in the USA. All of his products come from China and are drop shipped using Oblo. So Oblo, to my knowledge, they only create a link between Shopify and AliExpress, no other platform. So this is purely AliExpress suppliers and products. The store offers standard delivery options. So 14 day delivery to the USA, 30 plus days delivery to other countries via China Post. So there's no bias here. If anything, there's a bias towards America. However, even with that bias, what we'll see in a second, that America doesn't necessarily convert at the highest. His website is in English and has never been translated into other languages. The website support is also offered in English only and the majority of the traffic comes from Facebook advertising. So basically this guy's setup, if I had to guess, is probably the same setup into what the majority of people watching this video are looking into. So top countries by conversion rate, the chart below represents the statistics of 2.5 million visitors to his site and only includes countries with 100 plus orders. So it's a pretty decent test. There's a lot of information and data to make a conclusion from. So for example, he hasn't just had 10 visitors to one from one particular country and then assumed that the case is 2.5 million visitors, which is a pretty decent average, pretty decent mean um, to find a conclusion from. So if we have a look at the table, the results might be quite surprising, but people from Denmark actually converted at the highest at 4.67%. Then we have Australia and Norway, Ireland and Finland. So in those top five countries, three out of the five don't actually have English as kind of like their main language, which might be quite surprising to some of you. US here at seventh place and then UK just scraping a top 10 place with 2.71%. What's also very, very interesting is if we have a look at the average order values for this Shopify store, and we take a look at this table with the top 20, America, the USA doesn't even make it into the top 20 for average order value. And the UK only just scrapes a top 20 finish with an average order value of $42. So what this could mean is that America doesn't convert very highly. And then even when they do, they don't actually spend as much money as other countries. So what I've done to try and kind of put this into more illustrative purposes to make it easier to understand, I've made a list of all these countries based on that case study. I've given them the conversion rate taken from the case study. And then I've also added two other things which I've sourced myself. So number one is an English proficiency score. This is taken from EF.com, so a reputable source. As you can see, it kind of categorizes each country with either a very high, high, moderate, low, or very low English speaking proficiency. Um, this will become clear why this is important later on. And I've also given each country an average CPM. And this is actually a Facebook CPM. And I've taken this from Statista.com, which is, of course, another 
um, referenceable source and it's actually accurate up-to-date information too so this release date was actually November 2021. So what can we learn from this table then? What I've done is I've highlighted the top six converting countries in green and one thing to note here they doesn't include the UK and it doesn't include the US either so if we actually scroll to the bottom where I have those two countries we can see the UK and US so 2.71 conversion rate for the UK a 3% conversion rate for the US now the reason why this is doubly interesting or even more so interesting is because if we take a look at the average CPM for these countries the average CPM so what a CPM is is basically how much you have to spend on Facebook for a thousand people to see your ad. So if we take the US as an example, you will have to spend $35 for a thousand people to see your ad. Now, obviously this is gonna vary depending on what niche you're selling to, but overall on average, according to Statista, it's in and around $35. And for the UK, it's in and around $20. And the reason why this is so interesting then is if we take a comparison of the US versus the top performing country in that case study of Denmark, we can see that Denmark actually has a very high English proficiency, which means the majority of people who are gonna see our ad in Denmark understand English, they speak English, and they're comfortable browsing an English website. But what's even more interesting about targeting Denmark is the cost per 1,000 impressions, the CPM, is less than half that of America. So America at 35, and Denmark at 14. Essentially what this means is, so essentially what this means is that for every $10 you spend in America, you can spend less than half of that in Denmark and still reach the same amount of people. And even when you do reach that amount of people, more of them are gonna convert by targeting Denmark. Now, obviously this is generalizing things. It's gonna depend on what your product is, et cetera, et cetera. But for every 100 people that visit your store from the US, on average, 3% of those are gonna convert. Whereas in Denmark, you're gonna get 4.67%. So essentially to summarize, what it means is it's cheaper to advertise in Denmark and a higher percentage of those people will actually convert as well. So my final message for this video then before you go is next time you're testing or analyzing the results of your Facebook ads, if you haven't quite seen the results that you hoped for, or perhaps you're looking to launch some campaigns and start testing your very first products, don't just consider the US, consider the UK, and also consider some of these countries which you can see highlighted in green now. Something else to leave you with before you go is when you're heading into your ads manager and setting up your ad set. So let's say we want to run a campaign to Denmark and we want to make sure that we are essentially focusing on um, search locations. We want to make sure that we are indeed showing our ad to people who understand English. It's very simple to do just below all of these different targeting criterias in the audience section, you'll be able to target people by their languages. So in here, if we just put English all, we're gonna make sure that we're targeting people in Denmark that understand English and therefore they're not just gonna scroll past our ad because it's in a gibberish language they don't understand. So actually what my advice would be going forwards is make sure you test a handful of different products. Just choose half a dozen that have a high English proficiency. They have a high conversion rate from this list of countries that I've put together and split test them in their individual ad sets. Don't dump them all into the same ad set because Facebook will do a a decent job at finding which one is performing the best and focus its attention and focus your budget on that particular one but not all of them will get the equal amount of spend so if you separate them ad set by ad set so you have an ad set for Australia an ad set for Canada ad set for Denmark ad set for Finland you can make sure that each one gets its own fair share of the budget and therefore you'll have a more accurate test and so with that being said then guys I'm going to leave it there um, hopefully I've opened your mind to focusing on just more than one country US do not get me wrong is a great product you can make a lot of money there but what I'm saying is just open your mind to other countries you never know Know, you might find even greater success at a higher profit as well and one final quick message then before you go if you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program with myself we will talk
talk once per week on Zoom and then every day via WhatsApp. It comes with all the support you could possibly need, all the hand holding and explanations and reviews and help with whatever it is you need. If that's the sort of thing that would interest you, just comment the word accelerator down below. I'll send you over the info. We can hop on a call, talk about what your goals are and see if I can help you achieve them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.